Hey, this is Timo from Paddle FYI. And did you know which brand produces all of their paddle rackets by hand just outside of Madrid? Do you know which brand produces no diamond shaped rackets, but still has rackets with 27 and a half centimeter balances? Or which brand names all of their rackets after celestial bodies? I think I might have given it away with that last one, but yes, today we are going over perhaps the most artisanal paddle racket brand, Starvi. We're gonna go over a background of the company, the technologies that they use, and then we'll talk about their highest scoring rackets for different types of players. So what is Paddle FYI? Paddle.fyi is the ultimate hub for paddle racket information. We are creating the biggest database of paddle rackets on earth. We are 100% objective as we aggregate and score racket reviews from the best paddle racket reviewers around the globe in different languages. Speaking of that, we recently launched our translation in Italian, Swedish, and Spanish. So please drop by, let me know what you think. Back to Starvi. Starvi was founded in Barcelona in 2002, a little over 20 years ago by a former banker who basically wanted to turn his passion into his work. Today, they produce roughly 30,000 rackets per year and some of the top players play with them from Bea Gonzalez and Caro Navarro to Coqui Nieto, Javi Garrido, Lucas Bergamini. And just this month, Starvi signed a partnership with Asics, which basically seems to mean that Starvi's players will now be wearing Asics clothing. Seems like a super valuable deal for Asics. And of course, if you've ever played with Asics shoes, I think you know that this is also great for Starvi's players. So as Starvi manufactures all of their rackets in Spain, let's go over their manufacturing process. So first they receive and cut all their materials, the carbon fiber tubing that goes around the frame of the racket, shaping the rubber foam used for the face of the racket, cutting the carbon fiber that's used on the surface of the racket. These materials are then glued together with epoxy resin, placed in aluminum mold, and then they're baked at a high temperature. After they're taken out, there's a painting and decal phase. It's the third phase of the process for those cosmetic aspects. Fourthly, Starvi drills holes into the face of the racket. And lastly, the finishing where someone puts the, the wrist strap on the bottom of the racket, the end cap to close things up, and rolls the undergrip onto the racket. Starvi's rackets are artisanal products as each phase is done totally by hand except for the drilling of the holes in the racket face. This process takes somewhere between two and three weeks. And Starvi also uses only the highest quality materials, specifically carbon fiber, and they pioneered the use of innovative materials. One of the rackets is named Basalto Osiris because it uses basalt, a type of rock in the racket face, which helps to increase the durability. It would be a total shame to talk about Starvi and not mention the names of their rackets. Unsurprisingly, for a brand that seems to think of beauty of the rackets nearly as much as their performance, Starvi's racket names make references to Greek and Roman classical gods and goddesses and to celestial bodies. For example, the Titania Kepler is named after Titania, the queen of the fairies in William Shakespeare's comedy, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Titania was also the name then given to the largest of Uranus's moons. And then the Kepler portion of that name was the German astronomer and philosopher Johannes Kepler. The Aries, for example, of Astrum Aries refers to the Greek goddess of strife and discord. It's also a celestial body in our solar system. And the Meteora of the Meteora warrior refers to one of Aristotle's treatises a text which he discusses what he believes to have been the affectations common to all elements. A little bit more about the racket naming. The racket suffixes describe the type of rubber foam used in the core of the racket. Starvi introduced a new type of core this year, just this month actually, where outer layers of low density rubber are combined with inner layers of high density rubber in an attempt to provide more control for slower shots and more power for higher speed shots. This is called the dual. 
and it's used in the Meteora Warrior Duel. Starvi also has the Pro and the Soft Rubber Cores. The Pro refers to the use of a hard, high-density foam rubber core, roughly 50 kilograms per cubic meter. And the Soft refers to a softer, low-density rubber core of roughly 30 kilograms per cubic meter. Starvi often manufactures the same model of racket with different foam rubber cores in order to offer the benefits of a model shape, texture, or other aspects of the racket's design to players with different preferences regarding hardness or the touch that they would like to play with. Deciding on your desired touch is one of the most important parts of deciding on the racket you would like. So if you have any questions about that, please reach out to us at paddle.fyi. Importantly about Starvise rackets, they are handmade products, so their weight range winds up being wider than usual. While normally brands have a weight band of about 15 grams, Starvite rackets normally weigh somewhere in between 350 and 385 grams, so 35 gram weight band. And some of our reviewers mentioned that they received heavier rackets than expected, which can strongly affect maneuverability. They also spoke to pain that resulted in their arm after playing a few games with the rackets because of this higher weight band. This is certainly one consideration when evaluating a company with such an artisanal racket manufacturing process. About Starvise racket shapes, they only make round and teardrop racket shapes, as we mentioned in the introduction. They produce no diamond-shaped rackets, but this doesn't mean their lineup lack powerful high-balance rackets. Their most powerful high-balance racket, for example, is the Triton Pro, but we'll speak about specific rackets later. Starvise rackets mostly use 3K carbon fiber, and most of Starvise rackets have a special type of roughness called the full plane effect. This is Starvise name for their process of molding two millimeter high Starvise logo shaped reliefs into the racket face to provide this rough service that helps players generate spin. This roughness is way stronger than the sandpaper style of roughness used by other paddle manufacturers. Our reviewers mentioned that it could be rough even enough to help remove your calluses. I don't know if you want to use it for that, but I think it's enough for you to hit it out for three. Starvers rackets also include a logo in the heart or the ridge, the neck of the racket which helps reduce vibrations, and this should definitely be considered for players who have had issues with tennis elbow or epicondylitis. So that's our review of Starvise racket technology. We've analyzed the following Starvise rackets according to our standard review methodology to score their strengths and weaknesses so you can tell if they suit your playing style. The highest two scoring rackets were the Raptor Evolution and the Meteora Warrior, both scoring at 8.4. The Raptor Evolution scores high with a large sweet spot and high power from its high balance. It's a very versatile racket with a little more strength in the power. This was previously Stupor's racket before he switched to Sukes. Meteora also scores high for its versatility with a large sweet spot with a little bit more control. Bea Gonzalez's Astrum Eris scores an 8.3, also good for versatility. This is the only premium racket with a layer of fiberglass in addition to 3K carbon, which gives a little bit of flexibility for a medium soft touch, again scoring high with the sweet spot due to its round shape. Our reviewers mentioned that it had great maneuverability the Basalto Arcyris also scored an 8.3. This is Starvi's highest scoring teardrop racket. It has a very high balance. One reviewer mentioned it was 27 and a half centimeters. This is for intermediate advanced players and up as it has a high sweet spot. It has a medium touch. It's definitely stronger in power and control. It's probably for more of an attacker. Koki Nieto and Lucas Bergamini play with this racket. The Titania Kepler is for more control-oriented players. This is Manu Martin's favorite round-shaped racket. It has a big sweet spot and a low balance. Definitely check it out if you're for a right side player or if you want to prioritize defense over power. The Aquila Space Pro 
scores also at 8.2. It's a hard high balance racket, high on control, but low on maneuverability. The Triton Pro scored a 6.9 overall, which places it in our below average band. This is due to its difficult speed spot, low maneuverability. We recommend this only for advanced players looking for power. You have no worries about a smaller sweet spot and some head tweaks. That's it for Starvise Rackets. If you're looking for a high quality, artisanal, made in Spain racket, you definitely cannot go wrong with Starvite. This brand has a reputation for producing some of the best rackets in the industry with a wide range of models to suit different playing styles. This was Paddle.fyi's review of Starvise Rackets. If you'd like more videos like this, let me know which brand to cover next in the comments and I'll be sure to fast track it. We are uploading new racket reviews every day, so please be sure to check them out at paddle.fyi. Thank you and wishing you the best smashes in your next match. Ciao.